Hi there, welcome to my channel if you're new here. My name is Cassandra and today I'm going to be answering 10 popular homeschooling questions for you. This video is in collaboration with six other homeschool moms who are across Canada and so when you're done with this video then you can go ahead and click the playlist down below and that will show you their answers to these same 10 questions but with their experiences and perspectives of homeschooling in their province or territory. I'm here in Yellowknife Northwest Territories, Canada and so I'll be sharing my perspective homeschooling here. I also have two children who are five and four and although we are young in our homeschooling journey, I have known that I wanted to homeschool since I was a teenager and have been researching it since then. So I have had a passion for it for a long time and I'm happy to share my perspective and experiences so far with you. Let me get started with the questions first and then I will go on um, and tell you about my background with homeschooling. Consider subscribing if you don't mind if you are new here and definitely give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. So let's get started. The first question is, why did you decide to homeschool? And like I was saying, I have known that I wanted to homeschool since I was a teenager. The families that I was surrounded by that I knew I wanted my family to be modeled after were families that homeschooled. Um, and so when I looked at their kids and when I looked at the way their family values were, the family relationships were so strong, things like that, um, that was important to me as I didn't really have that growing up, strong family relationships. And so, yeah, that was something I knew I wanted for my family in the future. So that's probably the initial thing that drew me to homeschooling. Of course, since then, and since I've been researching and learning about homeschooling, um, I have been able to see all of the wonderful benefits of homeschooling. Already so far in our homeschooling journey, I could tell you, I could just go on and make an entire 10 hour video about the benefits of homeschooling. So yeah, so I guess that's the initial reason was because I wanted strong family relationships. Question number two is how long do you plan to homeschool for? Um, this is a good question because I know a lot of people are starting homeschooling in this time of COVID and they kept their kids home and try, gave homeschooling a try. Um, but I do plan to homeschool long term, basically as long as my husband will allow me. <laughs> um, we've kind of decided definitely for the public school years. I really hope to continue through the high school years, but of course it has to be something that my husband and I decide together. And of course we'll have to see how it's going for each child and, you know, reevaluate then. Number three is how much does homeschooling cost? And because I do have funding in my territory, I actually did track our spending last year. So my costs for homeschooling for me include extracurriculars, all curriculum, all books, all you know craft supplies, art supplies, anything I'm using for curriculum or just for art or whatever, even like printer ink, stuff like that. Everything inclusive, I spent just under 5,000 last year. Now don't let that freak you out because that is definitely not a requirement in any way. You can homeschool pretty cheaply. There's a lot of free curriculums out there. <clears throat> you know, you can borrow a lot of books from the library. There's a lot of like free resources if you are willing to put the time in to, you know, do it on the cheap basically to, to make it a thing in your budget. Um, you can do that for sure. But for us, I mean, like I said, there's funding here, not quite that much, but there's funding here. And so it makes it a lot more doable. In my opinion, this is the best place to homeschool in the country solely because of the funding and the freedom. A lot of people think once you have to get involved in registering your child with the school that it all of a sudden, you know, traps you and you have to report to them and there's all this pressure, but it's actually quite lax here. I believe the rules are you have to meet with the principal twice a year and um, they are those meetings are just to see if you need any resources. There's no standardized testing here. There's nothing like that. You have the total freedom to choose the curriculum that you want depending on your child, teach the way you want, when you want. Everything is is in your control, um, but they are able to offer you suggestions and it's actually quite beneficial to be registered with them because our homeschooling group is able to rent out the pool, rent out the field house, rent out the gyms, rent out the soccer fields as a school group. Um, and so that's like a huge advantage for free, right? It's all covered. So yeah, it's, there's, tons of advantages to homeschooling here. But yeah, that's my that was my spending, but I'm like a curriculum nut. I love to try different things. If you guys are new to my channel, I do a lot of curriculum reviews. Obviously like extracurriculars and stuff get expensive. A lot of people do that anyway, even if the kids are in school. So I just feel for the social, you know, 
I'll get to that. I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself again. Now, question number four is, how much time does homeschooling take? And of course, this is different for everyone. My kids are still so young that it does not take very long. For me, it's probably about two hours a day, the days I am doing it. And that's including things like read alouds and just reading to them. It's like just spending quality time with them. That's not necessarily sitting at a table doing workbooks. It's not sitting at a table doing workbooks. We do that for maybe like 15 minutes some days, you know. So, um, you know, a lot of people don't do it at all with kids my age. So number five is what is it like to homeschool in my territory? And I've actually already explained this in a previous answer, but it is the best place to homeschool in Canada. I'm convinced of it. <laughs> I did obviously homeschool for a little bit in Ontario, but very little. Um, and of course there's complete freedom there, but there is no funding. And so the funding is huge and I feel like it's opened up so many doors for us that I don't feel any pressure if I want to get them an educational toy, if I want to get them to try this curriculum, if this isn't working, I have the total freedom to do that. And I don't have to worry about the pressure of it affecting my finances. Also, just to be clear, the qualifications or what you have to do to register with the school board here is just provide the birth certificate. Um, I was surprised you didn't have to provide like the immunization records and all that, but nothing, just the birth certificate and you fill out a form. The form does say things like, uh, what is it like, or uh, what qualifications do you have is one of the questions. And I just literally put not applicable because <laughs> it isn't, I don't need any qualifications to teach my child. What, you know, curriculum are you planning on using? And I just put various you know, and it's fine. They don't, they didn't say anything to me. They, they put it through. So, um, it does ask traditional questions that may scare away people. And also they do not for, they're not forthcoming with the fact that you're funding. You can go to the school board and tell them that you're planning to homeschool and they will not tell you that there is funding. So you, you have to know, and then, uh, like basically figure out the person to contact and all that. So it is kind of complicated in the beginning as in just figuring out, uh, who to contact, but there's a great Facebook group here of all the homeschooling families. Well, not all of them, but many of them are on this Facebook group and you can ask them questions anytime and they're very helpful. So and also there's a great community here. Uh, so that's a good thing. It is small. I live in Yellowknife. As I said before, it is a very small community. I think there's about 40,000 people here. And I think there's, I don't know, maybe like 20 to 30 homeschool families. So there's not a ton of people, but they're very nice. And like I said, we do get together a decent amount because we go to the pool at the same time, we go to the gym at the same time. There's even homeschool gymnastics or stuff like that. So there's lots of opportunity for your kids to socialize um, with the homeschool community. Oh, we do fun holiday parties and stuff too when COVID isn't going on. I miss that so much. Number six is what about socialization? I know I covered that a bit before, but I do things like extracurriculars with them. So I make sure that they're in sports and um, other things to give them the opportunity to play with other kids. And also, like I said, our homeschool group does do quite a few activities together. So they're able to socialize in that way. And also you just regular things like when we're going to the grocery store in the middle of the week and they're able to talk to the cashiers or people around like, Oh, why aren't you in home? Why aren't you in school? And you know, they're able to talk to people around them in their community, obviously socializing with neighbors, you know, there's, there's always people around to socialize with. And obviously it depends a lot on the parent and how much they are social. My husband and I are not the most social people, but I still do not worry about it because they still are in the community doing things and, um, you know, enough to socialize with other people. They're able to socialize people that are not just in their age group. They're able to know how to speak to adults. Like when I go to these homeschooling things, like if we're in the pool, I'm often talking to like the, the preteens or whatever, and they, they know how to converse with an adult in a normal way. Like, you know, you just, I just feel like sometimes you talk to kids in school and they just have no idea how to talk to people that aren't in their own age group. So that's a real advantage to me, the socialization aspect. In fact, I feel like they're often better socialized. And also another thing is you're able to help them with, especially in the early years on how to develop these friendships, like how to start a conversation with another kid, or you can sort of notice some social cues and, and tell them like, Oh, look, I think that person wants to play with you. Look at the way that they're looking over. Or did you notice how they said to you, you know, something you can point things out and help them navigate those social relationships, help them to learn how to 
form connections with people. And so I think that's a real advantage of homeschooling as well, that you're able to help them with that. Number seven is what does your schedule or routine look like? And I will admit I am not the best at keeping a schedule, certainly, but even a routine. <laughs> I'm a very go with the flow person. I like to be spontaneous. But with homeschooling, I have tried to be better and I will tell you about an ideal day for us. But remember that this is an ideal day and this is not every day. We would wake up, we would eat breakfast, and then we would do chores. So then we do scriptures. We do a scripture study together as a family. Then we do school stuff. That's math, reading lesson. Uh, yeah, whatever we happen to be doing curriculum wise, so on light, whatever it is, um, any school stuff. Then we do exercise. Sometimes we do exercise before school. That's often the case. We exercise together, so we play the ring game, or you know, they go outside, or they do a workout video with me, or whatever it might be. They then have quiet time after lunch, so I guess lunch is in there too. Then they have outside time or free play. And then it's just whatever I can sneak in, basically at the end, around dinner time, it gets a little chaotic, they get tired, and sometimes we do some reading, extra reading then, sometimes we watch a show, whatever. Number eight is what is your style of homeschooling or your curriculum choices? And I guess I would say literature based curriculums, uh, I guess kind of Charlotte Mason. Um, yeah, I, I feel like we're, we're eclectic is this <laughs> is the style we are because like I said, I like to try new things and they like to try new things. We're all kind of pretty spontaneous. Uh, so far, my favorite curriculum choice has been sunlight. But uh, yeah, loved Sunlight, loved five in a row, which is very similar to Sunlight. I want to try that other one that's like five in a row with the Canadian one. I forget what it's called now. But anyway, um, we've tried. I like master books a lot for math. Uh, not so much the other stuff, just because I do try to keep my religion and curriculum separate, even though I am Christian. I don't really like it intertwined. Because it's like little things for me. It's like I don't like when they don't use the King James Version of the Bible. And I don't like, you know, just like little nitpicky things. Um, yeah, so I kind of like to keep that separate. But the math, I feel like, is just the stories in the math are good moral stories. I'm pretty sure Master Books is Charlotte Mason. Uh, yeah, I like book-heavy curriculums, reading-heavy curriculums. Oh, love um, All About Reading. That's been awesome. Hated... 100 ways to teach your child to read or whatever that is. Hated that. Um, but yeah, definitely go ahead and uh, I'll leave a playlist down below of some of the curriculums we've done for the different ages so far. Number nine, and we're getting near the end here, is what do or will you do when there's a subject that you don't know or don't like? Uh, and I just wrote down, just do it anyway. I, I mean, I don't really know. I would, uh, like, it just depends. If it's not useful or I don't feel it's useful, then I won't do it. But if it's something that I feel like they need for their lives or for the career that they are going to choose or whatever, then, you know, obviously I'll do it anyway. My husband is, thankfully, we are well balanced because I feel like the things I'm good at are different from the things he's good at. And he is an excellent teacher and like a wealth of knowledge. So thankfully, I have him. If it really comes down to it, I would just get him to teach it, although he's not too keen on it. But uh, he just wants to kind of teach what he wants to teach. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, that would be what I would say, I guess. And just brush up on it and learn it myself if I if I don't know it already. And then number 10 is how do you find time for yourself or get a break? And I think that I have a really supportive husband. If I need a break, I can tell him I need a break. And he's very good about taking the kids out to give me a break. Um, and I'm working on getting better at self-care. I'm actually doing this challenge right now. I watch Beatrice Caruso's uh, channel. She's like trying to lose 100 pounds. And she's doing this challenge right now that works on like working on your self-help, like focusing on reading, focusing on, you know, things like meditation and journaling and exercising. I've even had trouble with my weight just because I haven't wanted to prioritize exercising, even with children, just because I felt guilty. It's like so much time. And um, yeah, so those things have often been an obstacle for me, but I do feel like I'm getting better with it. And it's just about focusing on it, putting it on your to-do list and making it a priority really is the only way to to do it. If you don't make it a priority, it won't be. And homeschool can get homeschooling can get very overwhelming and take over things. So it's definitely something you need to prioritize and make time for. I also do things like we do a quiet time every day um, that I send my children up to their rooms. They sometimes play together, sometimes don't if I think they need a nap. 
but uh, yeah, they're, they go in their rooms and I'm able to do whatever I need to do when they're on quiet time. That's usually about an hour and a half, uh, you know, an hour, an hour and a half. And then I also put them to bed at seven and have that time after seven to spend with my husband or do things that I need to do. And also they don't wake up until seven. So they have grow clocks in their room or grow clock type clocks where they um, can see when they are allowed to come out of their room. So if they wake up early, earlier than I am up or earlier than I'm ready for them to come downstairs, then they stay in their rooms and play. They just wake up and stay in their rooms and play. And that way, if I want to get up early and say, knock out scripture study without noise or, you know, get an early morning workout in or whatever, um, I'm able to do that as well. So those are all the ways I guess I prioritize self-care. That is everything I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to check out that playlist down below to see all the awesome moms and I'm sure better answers to all these questions. <laughs> so if you guys want to see more homeschooling stuff or, you know, learn about what it's like to live here in Yellowknife, Northern Canada, then definitely give that a subscribe button a click and uh, click the bell too so you'll see about my upcoming videos. I also do food videos here too. So grocery challenges and things like that. So yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.